Dios te salve, María. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. So it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good evening to all of you. We have different schedules, time schedules. Good evening, good morning. This week has been amazing with the movie about Garbondel. It's, uh, we should give thanks to God because in one week, it's been for free. I don't know how many people have watched it. I have the information that in the two first days of the, since the movie was published on the official website, on Tuesday, it was, we all already had almost 700,000 views in all the different countries. So there's a lot more people than 700,000 since then. And so many movie theaters have been closed down in March and April. Ten countries were going to premiere with the movie. Um... So it's amazing to see what Our Lady is doing. She's giving us a very strong message. And it's for these times, it's for these moments. Not just is it a great, a very good thing that what is occurring, but she is the one who wants the message to reach us all. I have been asked by the official movie website to give a response to so many people who are worried about the situation of the coronavirus. The coronavirus. Um, one second, the video has seemed to have a small delay. It will return now. So many people, there's many difficulties. And so in the midst of this situation, you leave your house with a mask and precaution. And so behind the mask, you can see concern, fear, anguish, because people know friends, family who are suffering or who could suffer. So in the midst of this situation, the message of Our Lady and of our message is very clear, and it's a great help. Yet, we have found that there's people who have wanted to use the message of Our Lady for something that's not what Our Lady is saying. So we have to give a response that is Catholic and that is respectful of the apparitions and of what really occurred. Because if we don't respect what really happened, then we're not in the truth. It's not about saying something that is what people want to hear. No, but we have to see what God really wants to say, receive that message, and see what we can respond to see what we can do in our life. So there's two attitudes that we have to avoid with the coronavirus crisis. We've seen that, first of all, there's you know, an overflowing of people in the sanitary system, the health systems, and there's people who follow the apparitions. And the third secret of Fatima says, the Holy Father, before he reaches the great mountain, he goes through a city in ruins, and he walks, and he prays for the souls of the corpses that he finds on the way. And so many have interpreted the message on March 27th, the Urbe Orbe blessing that the Pope gave when he climbed up the steps of St. Peter's on his own, completely on his own, and he gave his message. He was accompanied by several priests, and that square was completely empty. What do we have to say to this? Some immediately say, oh, this is clear. It's the third secret of Fatima. It was fulfilled on the 27th of March. Others say that, no, it wasn't fulfilled and that it was an error to try to want to give an interpretation. So you can't 
want to see we can't go either way or the other. You have to be very careful and find and say there is a response. There is a prudent response to all this. What does prudence mean? The fundamental virtues. Joseph Pieper, one of the greatest philosophers of the 20th century, he says that prudence in a specific situation the specific action has a s father Jose Luis is asking if the signal has been cut off, but it seems like it hasn't. So we'll see what happens. They're investigating the problem. Okay, I hope the English translation is, I'm trying to keep up with him. This is a simultaneous translation, so please be patient with me as I'm, I don't have the text of his talk with me. So um, this is a message from the translator, not from Father. So please be patient. If you have any questions, you can write them in the chat, and I'll try to explain it better. Um, he's praying a Hail Mary right now as they try to fix the technical difficulties, but the technical difficulties do not exist. <laughs> because <laughs> we're hearing him pray the, the Hail Mary. Um, you should be able to see it as well. Anyways, I'll let you listen to his Spanish while we wait for him to come back. María, Madre de Dios, Madre nuestra, ruega por nosotros, pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. ¿Estamos? Vale, pues. So we were talking about the need for prudence. I'll get back to this. Pope Benedict XVI, speaking about finding a balance, we have to understand the prophecies that could come in a historical way that can touch history. Maybe the third secret of Fatima was fulfilled in 81 with John Paul II's attack. And maybe it can... Well, it's true that the Pope didn't die on that occasion. When we read it in the secret, it speaks about the Pope dying. Would it be being fulfilled now? Was it fulfilled then? Pope Benedict XVI and Jesus of Nazareth, from the entrance to Jerusalem to the resurrection. He speaks in this book about the end of the, the temple and the destruction of Jerusalem. Eusebius of Caesarea, when with He's reading from the text. He says, Eusebius said that even before the attack on Jerusalem occurred, the Christians would take refuge in Jordan. Even before the attack of Jerusalem took place, the Christians left Jerusalem because they said, there's danger here. And what had, who had announced that they had to leave Jerusalem? As Eusebius said, it would be good to be there was a revelation, a private revelation, according to Eusebius, according to which the Christians saw that they should lead Jerusalem. Epiphanius says that Christ had told them that they should leave Jerusalem and that they should go to a different place because the city would be attacked. And we read in the eschatological speech of Jesus an urging request to take refuge and to flee. Mark says, when you see the abomination of desolation set up where it shouldn't be, then those who are in Judah should flee to the hills. So Epiphanes read this. No, sorry. The Christian community read this shortly before the year 70 AD when Jerusalem was destroyed, and they fleed. Who is right? Is Eusebius right? an ecclesiastic author of the 4th century, speaking about this private revelation, or Epiphanes of Solomon. He said, Benedict says that we can't see what situation, the, you know, see exactly what this abomination was that they saw, but in the years of the War of Judea, there were events that could be interpreted as this sign that was announced by Jesus. because we have the book of Daniel that speaks about the profanation of the temple. So that's enough. 
there were sufficient events which permitted them to understand that, annou- that sign announced by Jesus. So there are several signs in history which permitted them to see how they had to act. And so we just have one sign. We have spoken about the third secret of Fatima, and we're not even sure for 100% sure. Cardinal Ratzinger published the third secret of Fatima in the year 2005. He read it in Fatima, in the square in Fatima. Cardinal Sodano read it there in the Mass of the Beatification of the Shepherd Children. Sister Lucia was present. She was over 90. And in that reading of the third secret of Fatima, we can't be sure. We don't know what, if this happened, if it didn't. Sister Lucia said that same day when it was announced. She says, there are people who are never happy, and we shouldn't pay attention to them. In the book that the Carmelites wrote, the Carmelites of Coimbra, where Sister Lucia lived, it was published after Sister Lucia passed away. There was a lot of discussions about this book because it speaks about revelations that she had after the apparitions of Fatima throughout her life. For example, the fact that the four consecrations that the popes made of the world and of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, she told the pope three times that the consecration wasn't well made. So if she told the pope that the consecration hadn't been well made, it was probably because of a revelation, but we don't know. So there was lots of debate about the third secret, if it was well, if we know it correctly, if we not, even about the publication in 2005. You know, there's debate, and Sister Lucia says, there are people who are never content, but we shouldn't pay attention to them. They always want something new to be published, something new to be said. And in reality, if we were to live what is most important that has already been said, but they're only, they're only worried about what can be said yet, but they're not happy with what has already been said, which is prayer and penance. So we have to interpret the times, but in the center, we have to have the center of the message clear because there are people who are trying to look for interpretations and so many times they go to different interpretations and they don't, and they'll say, oh, tomorrow we'll find out. And there's a priest who says, if we calculate the date, we're postponing our duty. When it's announced, we'll find it out. But what can we postpone? And what if tonight? What if today? What if now is your time? What if it's your hour now? We don't know. Maybe you'll never know what you're waiting to know. Cardinal Ratzinger, when he published The Third Secret of Fatima in 2005, he, 2000, he writes a comment, and he says, the fulfillment of the prophecy can only be known with certainty after it has occurred. Before, we're still in doubt. Maybe it was at John Paul II on May 13, 1981, and 13th of May, 82, he was there in Fatima to give thanks to Our Lady, and he had understood that he had been protected by Our Lady. In 84, he consecrated the entire world with a spiritual, a strong spiritual mention of message, a, a strong me- mention of Russia. And so after 82, John Paul II fights for Fatima, and he works with Fatima. He met with Sister Lucia. They spoke about the publishing of the third secret, and they decided to wait, even though Our Lady had asked for it to be published in the 60s. And it seems that since it wasn't published, Garbandal in 1961 becomes a continuation of Fatima, and it will take up the same subjects of Fatima. In Fatima, we were spoken to about Russia, that Russia would spread its heirs throughout the world. What heirs were spread throughout the world? Material, the atheistic materialism. And in Garbandal, Our Lady speaks about the same subject. She says, these difficulties will be called communism. He's looking in the book for the exact quote.
I would like to read it directly, but in this moment, I can't find it. The church will have to pass through a great tribulation in the midst of dense darkness. And we ask Our Lady, what is the name of these difficulties? And she told us that it, the name of it was communism. And this idea, since I haven't found it, but I do know it, the fact is that Our Lady appeared to them of dense darkness for the church, moments of great difficulties, of persecution for the Catholic Church, in the midst of a world that would pursue, pursue the church. And she speaks of this ideology, which has done great damage to the world. Second Vatican Council spoke about it, but it speaks Gaudium at best 20, and also Benedict the 16th, in Space Salvi, number 20 and 21. Karl Marx thought that the definitive great step was that of politics, basing politics on science, because science on its own was not enough. In 1984, he, in 1884, he began this revolution. His insight in fascinated then and continues to fascinate the world. And then the revelation began in a most more radical way in Russia. And this is the same mention that Our Lady made in Fatima. All should belong to everyone, and everyone wants the best for everyone else. Lenin had certainly spoken about that intermediate state this intermediate state, we know it very well. Instead of enlightening a healthy world, it has left behind it a desolating destruction. That Marx's error didn't consist only in not having not Marx had only admitted to work out this new world would how this new world would be organized. He forgot, and he forgot man's freedom. It's not possible to redeem him purely from the outside. In another place, Cardinal Ratzinger said, when politics promises heaven on earth, it promises too much. It can't give this. It can't give this. It has to help men. You know, we have a responsibility. They have a responsibility, but we have to realize that, as the document says, it fascinated, and it continues to fascinate. This ideology of materialistic atheism, you know, continues to fascinate. But now we see that all the materialism has fallen apart in one second, in you know, in just one month, because because when pro politics promises heaven on earth, it promises what it can't give. Only God is God. And on this earth, we have to look for the common good, but knowing that we're made for heaven, that we're citizens of heaven, not of this earth. So if communism fascinated and fascinates, and if it continues to be present in our world today, we can understand that now a second element, as Jesus of Nazareth said, that the first Christians saw sufficient signs that Jesus' prophecies were going to be fulfilled. And where did they go? They went to the hills because Jesus told them. Neither Garbandel nor Fatima has told us to go to the hills. So we have to wait. We're going to look now and see what heaven is trying to tell us now. But if it's to go up to hills, someone needs to tell me that because I don't know that. <laughs> but we should... You can probably go, you know, when we're no longer confined to house, we, our houses, we can go and pray the rosary walking up a hill, but nothing beyond that, so f as far as I know. So this is another point that is present. This ideology has returned. It's present in our society. So another point that's very interesting, we'll leave Sister Lucia to the side for a moment. 
in Garabandal. I usually don't talk. When I'm asked to talk about Garabandal, I don't usually talk about the prophecies. I usually say that the center of Garabandal is the encounter with Our Lady, the encounter with God in the Eucharist. But it's true that in Garabandal, like in Fatima, and in, like in the Gospel, there is a prophetic message. And so today we're looking at that more specifically because of the situation and to clarify some ideas that aren't very clear. But I recommend that, if possible, the book that I wrote about Garbandel, which is my thesis, my doctorate theister, thesis, um, it exists only in Spanish so far, but he has a shorter book, um, which you can find, Garbandel, Message of Hope. And so this book shows you the central message of Garbandel, and there's many... There's a very good video on garbandel.it, which is very great. And then about Fatima, um, there's a, he's speaking of a video, talks by Don Jorge Fernandez, which are on eukmami.com. So hopefully later I can put the link in the chat so that you can look for it. It's worth listening to Jorge explain this because it's wonderful what Our Lady in Fatima says and how it touches history and what God does. It's what Benedict said in the gospel. You know, gospel touches history. And you can say, I have to close myself. You know, this isn't going to happen. I'm a Christian, but I'm not a fanatic. If you're a fanatic, you, well, that's to close yourself in the same idea. But if our Lord gives you signs that something's going to occur, you have to listen to him. And so that's what we're speaking about now. We can't go to one extreme or to the other. We have to find a balance in between. 1963, Garbandal, the bells in the town start ringing, and they ask, Is the pope, has the Pope died? In the book, She Went to, With Haste to the Mountain by Father Eusebio Garcia de Pesquera, in this book he says, Is it because the Pope has died? Probably, Conchita responds, because only three are left. And he said that her mother looks up her and says, what are you saying? What, you're, what, what I've said, there's only three popes left. And how do you have, where did you hear that? She said, I didn't make it up. Our lady told me this. And then when they got back home, her mother asked her again, you mean there's not going to be any more popes? Another pope will come and the council will continue. You're very sure of this, but I don't see it so sure. Maybe something else will happen. Conchita repeated, another pope will come and the council will continue. And I tell you, and there's only three popes left. So then will the end of the world come? Conchita says, our lady told me the end of times. Is that the same? I don't know, she says. The interpretation isn't given to the visionaries. The church is the one who has to interpret them. Sister Lucia was asked in Fatima, before the secret was published, Ratzinger Bertone asked her, and she said, I can't judge whether you interpret it or publish it. I give you the revelation, and the church has to interpret and decide. You know, I leave it to you. And so Garbandel are apparitions that have the state of non, cons non consta, and it's the faith of the faith. The f Cardinal Ratzinger published a letter. He sent a letter to the Bishop of Santander in 1992, I published it in my book, and he says, with your arguments, we have studied it, and it seems interesting. He didn't say interesting. He says they've studied it in depth, and if they studied it in depth, then it's because something was in it. And so we see no need to intervene. We don't see anything against the faith. So all the bishops who have studied Garbanda are open. And they, thirdly, Ratzinger says, if you want, you can publish a letter to say non consta, that so in this state, it's that the church doesn't have security that it is supernatural. They're not, they don't have certainty. So there's this openness in a matter of waiting and studying. So what does this mean that Conchita says there's only three popes until the end of times? Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, his figure, he is very united to this subject. In, in 2006, when, 
they said, do you see yourself as the last pope of a time or the new pope? And Pope Benedict says, I see myself as a pope between two different um, time periods. Several authors later have given testimony that the girl in Garbondel, Conchita, says there'll be one pope who will last very little, and sh that pope doesn't count. So if you count the popes after Pope John the Twenty-Third, you have Paul the Sixth, John Paul the First, who doesn't last very long, and the Pope John Paul the Second. And so Our Lady doesn't count it. And then you have John Paul the Second and Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, who's the third pope. And then we enter into this new time period which would be the end of time. So with Pope Francis, we'd be in this, these end times. Other authors uh, Conchita is still alive, so she could still speak, um, but I just speak about the information that I have so far of all I've studied. Some say that there isn't this brief pope, and so that Benedict the Sixteenth would already be the Pope in the new end of the times. So, if the, some say the end of times begins with Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, and some say it begins with Pope Francis. Well, these are different interpretations. I'm going to read again what Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. Do you see yourself as the last Pope of an age or the first Pope of a new age? And Pope Benedict the Sixteenth says, it seems like he doesn't want to say go for either side, and um, he says. He's in between two ages. I don't belong to the old world, but I don't belong. To, but the new world doesn't exist yet either. And the question Peter Seawald asks him again: Pope's is Pope Francis's election a sign of a new time? Pope Benedict is, says it's the division of history into different time periods can only be carried out. Afterwards, once we have lived it, only a posteriori, afterwards, can you see how the movements of history have occurred. So therefore, I would not dare to affirm one thing or another now. But it's obvious that the church is leaving the old European system. You can continue reading this, um, his, the book of his last testament. And so the Pope says there has been an end of time. There's been a change. And so there's this change. He speaks to us almost with the same words as the messages of Garbandel. And so it's amazing to see that. This is the third element. We spoke about that there's pretty there's sufficient events that are occurring. So we're going to continue to explain what these events mean. This is all very interesting. We have to ask for the Holy Spirit to help us because they're very complicated times right now, very difficult. And precisely because of that, we need help from heaven. There's some who say, no, no, I'm not going to look at Marian apparitions because that's only for, well, they say different things. So less if you were crazy, if you follow apparitions. St. Thomas Aquinas says, Private revelations are given to correct customs. And he says, they're an aid to the faith, aid to piety. So apparitions are an aid to piety to sustain us. And Pope Benedict, in another document, which is the Apostolic Exhortation Verbum Domini on the Word of God. In number 14, he says, we have to receive them prudently. So then the faithful, I say this, don't run the risk because they encourage us to reach the gospel in the present moment so we can't completely cast them to the side. The words which are written in Latin non est negligent. It means a genuine value, giving them a genuine value, but they're not totally um, necessary, but they're not superfluous either. They're there to help us to live more fully in a certain time of history. So apparitions don't come 
to change or add or substitute anything of the public revelation. That's the center of the mystery. Tonight we're celebrating the pas the Paschal mystery, Happy Easter. Today, this is always the center of our souls, of our spiritual life. So th these revelations, private revelations, aren't to fulfill or complete the public revelation, but to help us to live in a specific moment of history. So it means that the apparitions are there to help us, to sustain us, to encourage us. Since the revelation is so great, our Lord, and it's made for all times, and our Lord has to make it concrete and specific by speaking to our hearts, but he's free to also do this through Our Lady as he wants to. He did this in Guadalupe, he did this in Fatima, in Lourdes, and he's doing it also now. The message of Garabandel has a message for the world today, more now than ever. We're living in a very concrete moment which the apparition has spoken to us about and for which we need, this is what we needed. We needed to go to Garbandel for this moment. The title of this talk is The Warning and the Coronavirus. They asked me an email with that title and I said, okay, well, let's try to talk about that. I said, but you can add the title you want and I'll be happy and I'll try to talk about it. We're living difficult moments, delicate moments, But we need, they're giving him a glass of water, and he's drinking it. We need to have clear ideas. Clear ideas means to know what this warning is really going to consist in, because there's people who are worrying, what's, worrying about what's going on, what's going to happen, because it seems like society is falling apart, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't, we don't know. We'll see what happens. But the question is that in Garbandel, there's a prophetic message. There's been a very great prophetic message in Garbandel. Our Lady said there would be a miracle which is greater than that of Fatima. The girls said it's going to be greater. I don't know if Our Lady said it or if the girls, when they saw what it was going to be, they said it's going to be so great. Father... Luis Andreu, who was a Jesuit priest studying Garbanda at the time of the apparitions, all of a sudden he entered ex into ecstasy. And the girls in ecstasies were able to see him. Normally they couldn't see anybody else when they were in ecstasy. And he cried out four times, and the whole town heard, heard it. He said, miracle, 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 miracle. He saw the miracle of Garbanda, and that very night as he went home, he said, this is the happiest day of my life. And he died peacefully. He died in the car on the way home. In a talk a short time ago, I met, met the youngest members of the family, Fontaneda, who were in the car with him. Um, the family members were in the car. They weren't, but they're the youngest members. And it was such a great miracle that he said it was the happiest day of his life. So it doesn't mean that everyone who will see it will die, but it's a very great grace. He was a very spiritual man, chosen by God. And so he was pierced by this miracle. So there's um, the three events that are predicted. Warning, miracle, and chastisement. The warning will come to prepare us for the miracle. Conchita says, Our Lady has announced a miracle that our Lord will do through her intercession. Since the chastisement is very great, as we deserve, the miracle is also immensely great, as the world needs. Our Lady told me the date of the miracle and what it's going to be. And, she's going, and I'm going to tell people eight days beforehand so that they can come. The Pope will see it from wherever he is. The sinners will convert. The sick will heal. We'll all be healed. She, our Lady didn't say that all will be healed. She said the sick will heal. Well, everyone convert. He said, sinners will convert. So there will be a great miracle. And anyone who is there can see it. Our Lady, on July 13th, 1917, said, in October, I will do a miracle. And in Fatima, 70,000 people saw it. They saw 
the sun fall upon the earth, they all dried. They all cried out because they thought they were dying. And a moment later, nothing had happened. And the sun seemed that it didn't move. The newspapers all had the story the next day. God can, can God do it? Yes, he can do it. He can do such a great thing. He has already done things like this in history. In 1963, Conchita asked Jesus, why will the miracle come to convert people? And Jesus responded, to convert the entire world. We have spoken about how the world will be in dense darkness, in darkness, a difficult darkness. The third secret of Fatima speaks of this, this deep darkness. I've got all these books here, and I, let me try to find the quote again. The third secret of Fatima. He's going to read it. The first had been the vision of hell, which the girls, the children had. The second secret was the petition for the consecration to this. I will come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my heart. Otherwise, Russia will continue to spread its airs. And the third part of the secret, it begins, we saw on the left side of Our Lady an angel with a flaming sword in his left hand. Flashing it, it gave out flames that looked as though they would set the world on fire. But they died out in contact with the splendor that Our Lady radiated radiated towards him from her right hand. Pointing to the earth with his right hand, the angel cried out in a loud voice, penance, penance, penance. And we saw in front of it a bishop dressed in white. We had the impression that it was the Holy Father. Other bishops, priests, men and women religious going up a steep mountain at the top of which there was a big cross of rough hewn trunks as of a cork tree with a bark. Before reaching there, the Holy Father passed through, so he still hasn't reached the city. It says he passed through a big city, half in ruins and half trembling with halting step. Afflicted with pain and sorrow, he prayed for the souls of the corpses he met on his way. Having reached the top of the mountain, on his knees at the foot of the big cross, he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him. And in this same way, there died one after another, the other bishops, priests, men and women religious, and various lay people of different ranks and positions. Beneath the two arms of the cross, there were two angels, each with a crystal aspersorium in his hand, in which they gathered up the blood of the martyrs. It's always very impacting to read the third message, the third secret of Fatima. Our Lady had asked for it to be published in 1960, and John the Twenty Third the Bishop of Fatima, and the Cardinal of Lisbon. John Paul II, when she, he met with Sister Lucia, he was given the secret. Lu Sister Lucia wrote it the sixth time she tried to write it. She had tried to write it for many years, but she wrote it in 1944. She felt like Our Lady was asking her to keep it as a secret and that the moment had arrived and she couldn't ma manage to write it. And so in 82, Sister Lucia asked him not to publish it yet. He consecrated our Russia to Our Lady's heart in 82, um, but Sister Lucia said it wasn't valid as Our Lady wanted. And in 84, he did it again. And then communism started falling apart. A series of signs started occurring In 1991, the Soviet Union fell apart. So well, this all occurred without a single shot in the midst of a great tension, nuclear tension, in which Europe, in the midst of two fires, the consecration itself, John Paul II said, the words he said there were tremendous. He speaks about the nuclear, he says, free us from nuclear holocaust. 
It was a tremendous time period. In the, in the consecration, he doesn't mention Russia. He says, all the peoples and nations where you are ardently waiting for the consecration. He made, he guarded silence and God and Our Lady can see our thoughts. And he asked that all the bishops, of the, Our Lady had asked that all the bishops of the world make this consecration with him. And Joan Paul II asked the bishops to do this. So the miracle comes in very big circumstances like that, that the third secret of Fatima is speaking to us about. The warning comes to prepare us for the miracle, but the warning will take place in difficult civil situations for the, in a difficult situa civil situation for the church. We'll see our soul as God sees it. Conchita wrote this, no, Maximina writes this in a letter. She's Conchita's aunt after a conversation with a girl in 1965. And in this letter, she says, it will be obvious that it's something from heaven. It will come for the, a purpose of salvation. It will come before the miracle, but no one knows the day or the time, the year before the miracle. Its hour will probably be an hour of mysterious darkness. It's referring to these circumstances in which will probably be that image which we see in the third secret of Fatima, this all, which is also darkness. Do we know if we're living that moment now? We don't know. We'll only know after the events f with certainty. There will be no refuge except for prayer. This is what Maximina writes after the conversation with Conchita. So we have to take it as it is. It's Maximina's memories of her conversation with Conchita. St. John Vianney the cure of ours, says that he received this grace of seeing his soul as God saw it. He writes this in a letter. My daughter, never ask God for the total knowledge of your misery. I asked it once, and I obtained this grace. If God hadn't sustained me, I would have despaired in the same instant. I couldn't stand it. The cure of ours, who's a saint, He's a canonized saint, the patron of the clergy worldwide. If he had the experience of the warning, and that's how he um, experienced it, well, what will happen to me? Let me drink some water. So it's a very great grace. Can this mystical grace occur for the entire world? The miracle of Fatima was everyone who was there present saw it. So it can occur. It has occurred at other times. St. Teresa of Avila, St. Jose Maria, so lots of saints have had experiences. And it can happen. And if we don't convert with that grace, God will send us this grace to purify us, to make us see the miracle with which he will show us clearly the love he has and the desire that we fulfill the message the central point is the message. The prophecy is just an um, indication of the message to help point us, direct us towards the message. And at the end, if we don't convert after the warning and the miracle, then there will be a very great chastisement. Which was revealed in Garbandel, on the, when they, it was called the Night of the Screams. I can't tell w what this chastisement will consist of because our, our Lady told me not to tell it. I was able to see it and not despair because I was seeing Our Lady at the same time. Jesus isn't going to send us the chastisement as a, just to, as a bother, but to, be, to help us. The chastisement is conditional. It will only occur if we don't receive the grace from heaven. And so in the center is this call to the love of God. Jesus doesn't want to bother us, as a child says. She was just a little girl. But she, she wants to do good to us. She wants to bring us to good. She wants to purify our heart. This is redemption, purification. There has to be a heart which reaches the cross with him. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will save it. So 
all these signs that we see, where are they leading us? Where does our Lord want to lead us? He always gives us light. So all these signs always call us to look for dates. No. To want to understand everything so that we know exactly when things are going to occur. No. The Christian community did this. Look what you read to us at the beginning. Did you already forget? In the center, that's not in the center. In the center, we can't postpone my duty to conversion. I could, you know, my encounter with the Lord could occur this very evening before the warning, our Lord's second coming comes. So I could be postponing my conversion the need for my conversion, I can't substitute it for a date. I can't. St. Paul says, it's a second letter to the Thessalonians. Whoever doesn't work, let him not eat. There's lots of people who are waiting for the Lord's second coming, and they're not doing what they should do, which is fulfill their mission, their responsibility, what it corresponds to you in this moment. We all have a task, and we can't give this task up. Whoever doesn't work, let him not eat, is what St. Paul says. So this is our duty. If you live this most important, I already said this from St. Conchita also says this in addition to Sister Lucia. It's already been said. They're only worried about what is yet to, say, yet to be said instead of fulfilling what has already been said. Prayer and penance. Father, I, I wanted you to tell us something that's more exciting. No. There's nothing greater than to get closer to God. There's nothing more beautiful than to go to the Lord with all our heart, to see Him close to us. And for this, Garbandel has called us to an essential, an essential center point. All the messages call us to go to the tabernacle. Conchita says, Our Lady says to Conchita in the last apparition, on November 13, 1965. Conchita, don't you know that my son is waiting for you day and night in the tabernacle? If he's there, why are you so lazy and you don't go to him? So uh, they've passed me some questions that you have, and I'll try to respond to some of them. I would like to touch one more subject before I go on to the questions. I'm not going to talk this talk to this about talk about this for very long, but Our Lady is in a prophet of calamities. When Our Lady comes to tell us that difficulties are coming, it's very hard for her to say it. She said to Conchita, I don't like to tell you these things, but you have to know them for your salvation and for the glory of God. God wants us to live in the truth, and he wants his church to be prepared. And this leads us to a great urgency. Why am I thinking about all these little things? Like, Why am I so unfocused from the true important thing that has to light in my, and light in my life? The Eucharist, the message of Garbandel, is the Eucharistic is present in the first and second message. There's a Eucharistic miracle in the last miracle, in the last message, she speaks about the Eucharist. They were prepared by the angel, taught how to receive communion. You can still do this. You can make spiritual communion even now in this time of confinement. Jesus can come to your heart now, even though you're in your home and you're not allowed to go to the church. If you make the effort and ask our Lord to come, he'll come. Many people are watching Masses online with great fruit, and they're, obviously you're desiring the Eucharist, you're desiring to go to confession, but you go to him with all your heart. And so Jesus himself also prophesied difficult moments. Jesus said, the passion will come. And what will we do with St. Peter? No, Lord, that won't, that won't occur. That's never going to happen. And he says, depart from me, Satan, because you think like men, not like God. So many times we say that our Lord is a prophet of calamities because he says things as they are. God doesn't come to sweeten the truth. He comes to tell us things as they are. 
But at the same time, Our Lady in Garbondel and Our Lord in the, in the Gospel says, Our Lady says, I love you greatly and I desire your salvation. And he says, I have all of you under my mantle, Our Lady said. She played with the girls. She laughed with the girls. She listened to them in their most simple things. She said, Conchita, speak to me about my, my children. Tell me things about them. So you and your heart have to live this. She is with us every single day. But she also tells us the things that we need to hear. And so now I'm going on to your questions. How... Garabondo speaks about many cardinals, bishops, and priests while going on the, following the way of perdition. So how to understand that. We have to be prudent and try to help them with our prayer, with our donation, because there's priests who do pray. There's priests who, there's priests who do not pray, and there's priests who do not have the Eucharist in the center of, life, of their life. That's true. But there are others who do pray. They go before the tabernacle, and you can tell this in their way of speaking, of acting. And so you have to look for those priests. And what if I don't have priests like that close to me? Our Lord is going to attend you. Now in this time of confinement, our Lord helps you. He'll give extra for your soul. even. If, but what you can't do is get distracted, go off the path. You can't go off the path just because others are off the path. That would be the great mistake. And so in these moments, we must be very strong and know that God always gives us the grace, the sufficient grace, and the abundant grace for the mission that we have to fulfill. God never leaves you alone. He is always with you, and he's always going to sustain you in any situation. No matter what happens, our Lord will be at our side. Clarify the difference between the end of times and the end of the world. This man said, um, that Pope Benedict XVI said, it's a time, he speaks of a time, a change of time. When the third secret of Fatima was translated to English, it says at the end, at the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. So at the, after this, the Immaculate Heart will triumph. So is there a certain relationship? Yes, but the girl said, I don't know. So the interpretation is open until it occurs, and we can't want to interpret it because we can't close, finish the circle until it happens. Like, we can't. We have to wait. We are very hopeful because today, if a priest goes out on the street, it, he can listen to all types of insults. Will we be able to live our faith with joy when there's not this situation of tension that is so sad? Yes, it will occur. But without this moment of crisis, we don't know when it will occur. We don't know. Was the third secret of Fatima fulfilled when Pope Francis was in St. Peter's Square? I can't tell you that. That everyone has to use their opinion. Well, more than opinion, you can think it is, but only God can tell us. History will tell us as time passes because he still ha there's more signs afterwards that have to occur. Abundant corpses, Italy, Spain, hospitals. Hospitals and funeral homes are, have collapsed. Like they don't have enough re resources. In South America, they've told me that until the government document reaches the hospital to tell the family they can take away their deceased family members. Sometimes they have even eight days, they have corpses in the hospital halls waiting to be collected by their families. Sometimes, like, they go to see, when they go, like, the paper is inside the bag with the corpse, and sometimes the writing on the paper has disappeared, and so they no longer know who that person is. I mean, there's situations that are very difficult. So I don't know if the secret is fulfilled now, but I know what is urgent is that we have to put the scent of the gospel in the center of our life, which is the Eucharist. And what is heaven asking us to do? You have to, the second message of Garbondel says, ask us and we will give you the grace. The Eucharist is be gi being given less and less importance. We have to give Our Lady our sacrifice. Receive Jesus' sacrifice so that you can also give your sacrifice with him in the midst of this situation that we're living. 
live it united to the Lord without being scandalized by the cross. This is the faith of Abraham, the faith of Our Lady at the foot of the cross. What can we say about the death of Joey Lomangino? This is a great defensor. He's a great defensor of the Garabandal apparitions, and he died after Conchita had told him that he would see the miracle and that he would be cured. At the end of his life, he interpreted this, that he had seen a miracle in his life, the miracle of faith, without that he would be cured. If you don't know him, he's a man who was a great promoter of Garbandel. He reached Garbandel because of Padre Pio. He went to confession in English with Padre Pio, and Padre Pio told him all his sins in English without speaking in English. I mean, without Padre Pio knowing English. And then he said, he asked him if he should go to Garbandel, and Padre Pio told him to go, and he went to Garbandel, and he received this announcement that he would be cured. Conchita wrote this on a piece of paper in a note. Joey Lamangino converted. He became a witness of Garbandel. He founded an institution to speak about Garbandel. He always gave his testimony, and I always heard people say, and people always said, Joey Lamangino can't be the center of Garbandel. And he died, and nothing had happened, obviously. He can't be the proof of the apparitions. If the girls have levitated, they levitated. Garbandel can't be false or true because of Joey Lamangino. He said, I received how many years afterwards, maybe t 2014, 50 years later, 50 years later, he said, I've received the gift of faith and perseverance, which has been new eyes. It's been like I've received new eyes, and I'm not scandalized by Our Lady. That's the response that he gave at the end of his life. Did he interpret badly? Did she, do we have to wait for a new interpretation? We don't know. But the fact that the fact is that and many, there's many witnesses at the apparitions. I've seen people cry when I interview them about Garbandal. They say, just to see the girls in ecstasies and how they lifted up their head, you would cry because of the joy, the amazement, the wonder in their faces. They were transfigured. They weren't of this world. People would touch them, and they, they, weren't of, they didn't have flesh, normal flesh. They would try to prick them. You can watch videos and see what, uh, what the apparitions were like. So what happened there doesn't depend on Joey Lamangino. He died on eight, June 18th, which is a day of Garbandal. And he, Our Lady loved him a lot. And so, so maybe... Why does Conchita not say anything? Conchita, I like the example... Of Saint Catherine Labore, Labore, the miraculous medal in France, eighteen thirty-one. Until she died, no one knew she was a visionary. And Conchita doesn't want to be at the center of everything now. And it's true that it would help us if she would speak, if she would say something, or maybe in private or whatever. But you know what happens. In 1971, Joey Lamangino wrote her letter, and Conchita responded, Joey, all those letters that you send to me so that I sign these declarations that you want me to write, I would tear them all apart because you don't know how much it makes me suffer. A short time ago, a group from France took what I said out of context, and they've made, began to harm a lot of people with the message that I gave them the parent message that I gave them. It was just a small testimony. And they took it out of conscience. Like, Kachita said this. So it's normal. So she's suffering because of the situation. But it's true that there's some people who are prudent, good, who could help for, for these things to be done in a way so that she could help us all. Because her true mission is to speak to the world about Our Lady. And it's a very beautiful message. It's, it's a very beautiful mission. And, it, and I understand that she thinks she has already want, 
she's already done it, that she already said what sh she had to say, and that she would be putting herself in the center if she were to continue to speak. Or maybe try to like distort the message. But as I say, we could try to help her with great prudence. So <laughs> this is my doctoral thesis. Well, the books that I have here, this is Second Vatican Council, Gaudium et Spesis. This is the Conchita's Diary, Space Salvi by Benedict XVI. I didn't read anything about that. This is the Last Testament of Pope Benedict XVI. She went with Haste to the Mountains by Father Eusebio Garcia de Pesquera. We have to ask Our Lady to, to spread her messages and that she may work in us and so that we may not get confused, but that Our Lady sustain us all and defend us all. And now let us pray a Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So in a very short time, there'll be a good testimony with, a new, with lots of testimonies about Garbandal. And so we have to pray for the people who are doing this video, um, so, as it will be published very soon. God bless.